Hi everyone, my name is Mayank Jindal. Thank you for joining me today on open source inclusivity empowering newcomers. I will talk about how we can increase inclusivity so that newcomers can feel welcome to open source and contribute effectively. Little bit about me, uh, I am working as a software engineer in Bay Area in United States since last four years. In the past, uh, I have been contributor to open source. I was a mentor in Google coding through which I guided and educated pre-university students in open source software development. I was also selected to contribute through Google Summer of Code where I dedicated 12 weeks to further contribute. Uh, I graduated from University of Chicago uh, with master's in computer science and from IIT Kharagpur with bachelor's in civil engineering. A brief disclaimer before I start, uh, the views and opinions expressed in this talk are personal and do not reflect the official policy or position of any other agency, organization, employer, or company. Agenda of this talk is, uh, first, I will be giving some introduction about inclusivity and what does it mean in the context of open source. Then I will be talking about different kind of challenges which are faced by newcomers. Then I will be talking about actionable strategies which open source organizations can use to resolve some of those challenges. Then I will be talking about the benefits of inclusive culture, and then we will leave some time uh, for questions and answers. Okay, so to, to begin with, what does inclusivity means? Inclusivity is about making sure that all members of community have a sense of belongingness. In the context of open source, there are many kind of newcomers like aspiring contributors, without programming experience, who are eager to learn and contribute without working on programming tasks. Then first time open source participants who might be experienced in programming, but they are navigating open source culture for the very first time. It also includes domain experts who have a lot of experience in the domain, but they are new to open source. They are eager to use their specialized knowledge with open source co communities. So in general, inclusivity means creating an environment where everyone, regardless of their starting point, feels that they belong in the community and they can contribute meaningfully. Our goal should be to lower entry barriers, provide support and celebrate the diverse path. Next, let's talk about challenges faced by newcomers. Number one, which I feel is the most important is psychological barriers. Entering the open source world can be definitely intimidating for newcomers. They often face psychological barriers such as imposter syndrome and fear of rejection. And just the thought of contributing to a project which potentially affects thousands of users can be overwhelming. It can lead to self-doubt and hesitations in asking questions. Psychological barriers often stand as unavoidable obstacles for newcomers who are looking to contribute to open source projects. These barriers originate from perceptions and emotions. It can significantly decrease the willingness and ability of individuals to engage with the open source community. Among the most widespread psychological barrier is imposter syndrome and fear of rejection. Both can stop potential contributors from taking the very first initial step. Talking about the imposter syndrome, it can be explained by a uh, permanent belief that someone doesn't deserve the success and they have a fear of doing looked as uh, unskilled. In the context of open source, it can feel like uh, underqualified to contribute, even after having skills or accomplishments. This syndrome can be particularly paralyzing for newcomers uh, who may compare themselves unfavorably with more experienced contributors, leading to self-doubt and hesitation to participate. 
Also, fear of rejection plays a significant role. Newcomers might worry about that their contribution will be criticized or outrightly rejected. It makes them hesitant to submit pull requests or share ideas. This fear is often increased by the public nature of open source contributions, where feedback and discussion are visible to the entire community. The potential for negative feedback can become a powerful barrier which prevents newcomers from contributing. It affects the overall open source community because of not getting new perspectives and new ideas. Then technical hurdle comes into the picture. Technical hurdle represents a significant barrier to entry for newcomers. These challenges range from navigating large and complex code bases to understanding project specific convention and project specific workflows. For someone new to open source or even to programming in general, these hurdles can be scary and it can create a steep learning curve that may discourage continuous participation. One common technical hurdle is the size and complexity of many open source projects. Newcomers often find themselves overwhelmed by the vast amount of code and vast amount of documentation. They are unsure about where to start and how to locate issues suited to their skill level. The feeling of being lost in the code can prevent potential contributors from making their very first initial commit. Moreover, uh, the fear of making mistakes or breaking something in a well-established project, it increases another layer of, uh, it increases the scariness. Another technical challenge is the diversity of tools and technologies used across projects from version control systems like Git, GitHub, to continuous integration tools and specific programming languages. The variety of technologies can be confusing. Each project may have its own set of tools and conventions, which require newcomers to not only learn the project code base, but also adapt to its technological ecosystem. Many of the newcomers have a misconception that they need to understand the entire code base before contributing. They believe that they must grasp every aspect of a project and uh, before they can offer anything of value. And this belief that uh, they, need to, they need to grasp every aspect of the project, it can significantly increase the entry barrier. In reality, many contributions focus on specific manageable issues and understanding comes with time and experience. Now let's talk about actionable strategies, which can be used to resolve the challenges. First is mentorship program. Why is mentorship so important? Because it boosts confidence. Uh, a mentor provides reassurance, guidance, and a much needed push to encourage newcomer to take that very first initial step to make that very first initial commit and not to fear making mistakes. Mentorship brings structure to what can be an overwhelming journey. Through a th thoughtful matching process, newcomers can be paired with experienced contributors who not only share their knowledge, but also understand their mentee's unique learning path. This approach ensures that both mentors and Manti set clear milestones and objectives. It will create a learning environment that is both challenging and supportive. But mentorship isn't just about personal growth. It's also about enriching the entire open source ecosystem. By accelerating the learning curve, mentorship, mentorship cultivates a more diverse and innovative project environment. Diverse perspective led to innovative solutions. It pushes the boundary of what we believe is possible in open source. Implementing a mentorship culture within our communities required very intentional efforts. It involves developing resources and training for mentors, ensuring that they should be very well equipped to offer valuable support. 
it's also about creating a system where success, no matter how big or small, those successes are celebrated by acknowledging the collective achievement of the open source community. Clear documentation is also very important for inclusive and welcoming open source environment. It is a very first point of interaction for newcomers. Clear documentation should guide them through their initial journey into a project. It is highly beneficial in reducing entry barriers. It provides clarity, direction, and a sense of belonging. For many aspiring contributors, especially those who are into the open source space for the very, very first time, the availability of comprehensive, understandable, and accessible documentation can make the difference. Effective documentation has many key components and each component serves a specific purpose in the newcomer's journey. For example, a well-written getting started guide offers step-by-step -step instructions for the initial setup. It ensures that newcomers are not lost in the complexity of project configurations. Contribution guidelines lay down clear expectation and describes the coding standard to be followed. It explains the process for submitting contributions. It helps contributors navigating through the contribution process. Another aspect is issue labeling. Issue labeling provides a roadmap for newcomers with labels such as good first issue or beginner friendly labels. It directs them to tasks that match their skill level and offer a gentle introduction to project contribution. Next, a code of conduct, a code of conduct establishes community norms and expectations. It fosters a safe and respectful environment for all the contributors. The benefit of clear documentation are not only limited to the technical aspect of contribution, it also enhances accessibility, which makes the project approachable for contributors with varying level of experiences and from diverse backgrounds. It also facilitates learning, offering a structure for those which are new to domain or new to open source environment. Also, it builds confidence among newcomers. It reduces anxiety and uncertainty it encourages active participation. We need to make sure that open source projects get continuous benefit from clear documentation. So it is very crucial to embrace a culture of continuous improvement. Regular updates to documentation ensures that it represents the current state of the project and it serves the evolving needs of the community. It encourages community contributions to documentation can further improve its quality and relevance. Actively seeking and utilizing feedback from newcomers is essential in identifying areas for enhancement. It also ensures that documentation remains an effective tool in lowering entry barriers, which fosters a more inclusive and more vibrant open source community. This is one of the example for a uh, documentation of uh, Visual Studio Code by Microsoft. So it, it is well written and well documented. If anyone is very new to open source community, they can, this documentation will be very first guide for them. So it will help them understanding the community guidelines and how to contribute. Another is beginner friendly issue tagging. In open source projects, it is crucial that it is a crucial practice which significantly lowers the entry barriers for newcomers. This approach involves making certain issue with tags such as good first issue or beginner friendly issues. It helps new contributors by indicating that these are the tasks which are good entry points into the project. These tags guide newcomers towards contributing that match their skill level and it offers a welcoming invitation to participate. The importance of beginner-friendly issue tagging 
lies in its ability to easing out the initial contribution process. In general, open source projects can be very daunting with vast code bases and vast complex issues. For someone new to the community, for someone new to the community or even to programming in general, knowing where to start is often the biggest challenge. Beginner friendly tags address this challenge and provide a clear starting point that can help build confidence and competence. Just attaching labels to random tasks is not sufficient. It involves a thoughtful consideration of what makes an issue accessible to newcomers. These issues should be well defined, relatively isolate, and come with thorough documentation to guide the contributor. Additionally, they should offer a meaningful contribution to the project, which ensures that newcomers feel their work is valued and impactful. The benefit of this practice is way beyond the individual contributions. Engaging new people early and providing positive experience can lead to long term involvement and retention within the project. As these individuals grow in their skills and confidence, they become valuable members of the community, often taking on more complex tasks and even mentoring other new contributors. For open source projects which are which are planning to implement beginner friendly issue tagging, there are a few best practices. One is regularly reviewing and tagging new issues as beginner friendly, then uh, providing detailed description and resources within tagged issues to guide the contributors, then offering feedback and support to newcomers tackling these issues. It will foster a supportive community environment. This is one of the example uh, where good first issues are labeled. And this is one of the example of uh, one of the issues. So in this issue, uh, everything is written well written. Everything is written in a clear manner, like steps to reproduce, what is the issue, uh, what is the expected state, and what 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 a developer can do to reproduce the bug and uh, see in their development environment. Next, coming to inclusive community practices. Creating an inclusive and welcoming environment is very important for the growth and sustainability of open source communities. Inclusive practices start with establishing a clear and visible code of conduct alongside welcoming community guidelines. These foundational elements not only set the tone for interactions, but also provide a framework for addressing conflicts constructively. Just imagine a community where every member, regardless of their background and experience level, feels safe to contribute ideas and code. That's the power of well-crafted well code of conduct. But inclusivity doesn't stop there. It extends to actively seeking and supporting contributions from underrepresented groups. It could mean hosting dedicated outreach programs, workshops, or providing mentorship opportunities specifically designed for these groups. Targeted support can lead to a significant increase in contributions from diverse community members. It will bring a lot of new perspectives and ideas to the project. Furthermore, uh, valuing every community member is crucial. It means encouraging open dialogue, which ensures that all voices are heard and recognizing every contribution regardless of the size, big or small. Celebrating contributions publicly, for instance, through shout outs in the community meetings or highlighting newsletters can be very encouraging. It can significantly boost morale and it can foster a sense of belonging. One impactful way to showcase our commitment to inclusivity is by highlighting first time contributors or and sharing testimonials from experienced mentors and newcomers. By featuring these their stories on the community page, we not only acknowledge their valuable contributions, but also inspire others to take that very first step into open source communities. Now let's talk about benefit of culture and diversity, benefit of culture, inclusive culture and diversity. Its benefit is way beyond initial contributions. 
lowering entry barriers is just the first step. It helps in retaining those contributors. A welcoming community encourages ongoing participation. It reduces turnover by making members feel valued and understood. It helps in incorporating a wide range of experiences and viewpoint. It leads to more innovative solutions and creative problem solving. It enhances project quality. Diverse teams are more likely to identify and address potential flows. It facilitates comprehensive testing across various use cases and various scenarios. And it also increases the positive reputation. Projects which are known to inclusive, which are known for inclusivity attract more users and contributors. It enhances the project standing within the wider open source ecosystem. This was all from my side. Uh, any questions, any questions which I can answer? Thank you uh, a lot. And uh, we don't have a mic, so you just out loud ask the question. Uh, we don't have any questions online, so anyone has a question? Can I ask a question? Of course, because I actually have one question. So um, uh, let me just wave my hand that I'm here. Um, so my question is, because um, I'm working in a project actually where we do a lot of mentorship. So you you participated, as far as I remember, from the from your bio as a mm -hmm. um, um, mentee. But do you also now act as a do you do you do some mentor work as well now? Are you now on the other side as well, participating in mentorships as mentor? So I have been on the other side of table as a mentor in Google Coding, which is a pro which was a program for uh, pre university students. So uh, there I worked on creating issues, uh, issue tagging, and making sure that mentees are on the right path. Uh, in general, I felt that every mentee is different. Like uh, after talking to few of few of those, I felt that their experience level uh, differed differed very like differed across range very on a very broad range. Like some people have, were having uh, Git related issues. Some people were having like domain related issues. So uh, my experience as a mentor was that every mentee requires different level of support. So, uh, and the thing is that once we are, once we contribute to some open source community, once we are ident once we get identified with the code base, it's very easy to forget that it's very easy to forget like what kind of issues we got when we started. So uh, it's it's uh, like we should we should remember like we should remember our progress as we uh, as we kept contributing in the open source. Thank you. So any other questions in the audience? One question. Yeah. Uh, so you mentioned setting up mentorship. Uh, as a good practice for open source projects. Um, I feel like that's something that's not really common. I haven't really seen it in open source projects in the, in the real world. How, is it, how would that work? Because often open source projects are you know, lacking in funding and time. People don't have that much time to work on things. And how would you set up an actual mentorship program there in this kind of context? Yeah. So. Uh... It's like if if a open source project has uh, ten contributors, uh, in an ideal world, all those ten contributors should offer their mentorship to newcomers. But uh, it doesn't happen very often because everyone has their own different priorities. So uh, that's why reaching out to different groups is important. Because if we restrict our uh, open source community to a certain group of members, uh, it's highly possible that most of them would not be having time. So that's why it's very important to engage a large amount of audience with our open source communities and with our open source projects. So that's the that's the one thing I can think of right now. 
And there are also like Google Summer of Code, where you don't, if you don't have a budget, then Google gives you also a budget for oh. mentorship. Yeah, that's good. So there are some programs that can support you. Any other questions? Great, okay, Mike. Uh, thank you a lot for your presentation. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me.